Good evening. Happy Saturday. All my Jewish friends, Shabbat Shalom. It's uh, uh, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on a Saturday. Uh, what's up, PJ? How are you doing, man? Um, and, uh, oh, Evelyn just joined in. What's up? How are you doing? Um, just uh, waiting on Brian to join in with me here for a, uh, a nice talk. And uh, uh, speaking of... Uh, Pastor John Randall, he, uh, um, my um, interview with him, my talk with him is available on YouTube channel. If you haven't seen it, so do go ahead and check it out. Brian is here. Go ahead and request me, Brian, and a few, so I can uh, get you on here. And so, all right. And uh, let me see. Or do you want me to send you a request, Brian? Oh, there we go. I see it. All right. Wait for it to connect. <laughs> Daniel. Oh, what is up, B? How are you doing? What's up, man? bro? Good. <laughs> I love you around the Dodger Kepa. It's red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a rep. Yeah. Uh, ah, okay. SC. Okay. See, <laughs> I don't know. It's so random. I have a San Diego Padre set, even though I'm not a Padre. Fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And uh, at least you have both wearing caps. So, how are you doing, man? I'm good, bro. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you, dude. I can hear you very good, dude. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah I've been good. Just um, just cooked some dinner up and then uh, just tried to chow it down pretty quick. So um, yeah. just yeah. did some errands today. Okay. BJ uh, just joined us on, the, yeah. on our broadcast, so he'll be chatting in, in and out, you know, during our broadcast, maybe just to annoy us or just like, – Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it happens, you know, like – so uh, just want the people to get to know who you are and uh, um, yeah. just um, a little history about both of us. We Our families go way back. I mean, like way back. So you, yeah. you grew up you grew up with um, my cousins, Alvin and Aldridge. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, like how did you guys meet again? Oh, man, um, that was through like a lot of the old um, – seventh day like circle of yeah. friends in school because i went to glendale um academy and then yeah um yeah so it was like through all those circle of friends and then the groups of you know like musicians from all the churches all around the place so that's um, amazing i know it's yeah like your family and like the memora family are just like I guess like in the musically inclined families. And so it's, so, <laughs> it's really cool. And like how, you know, we, you know, we're like, that's kind of <laughs> like the, the culture of our families. And so, and uh, yeah. so that's great, man. So like, yeah, I just like, just give our view. Hey, uh, Bung Aldridge just joined in actually. Prob yeah. What's up, man? Yeah. Aldridge just, Aldridge <laughs> just joined uh, to our broadcast. Hey, Aldridge, you remember Brian? Awesome. <laughs> Yeah, he's oh yeah, yeah he's here. Yeah, <laughs> and Tommy Jordan just joined up uh, uh, Willie Jordan's grandson, and so how you doing, man? And uh, why don't you <laughs> give our viewers a a little autobiography of who you are and uh, like your your life, your family, how you came to the Lord, and how God led you to where you are at this point? Oh man, um, <laughs> that's a yeah. That's like a that's like an epic uh, stack journey kind of answer. Um, yeah. But um you know I was I was very blessed. I was born and raised here in um downtown LA, so I grew up um in the Temple Street um Echo Park Rampart district area. Um probably not the um <laughs> not the friendliest of places. Um and uh, I was uh, just very blessed to, to have been born into a, a family of believers. Uh, my parents were um, evangelical believers. So were my, grand, my grandparents on both sides. So my yeah. dad's parents yeah. um, and my mom's parents. Um, so, you know, there's, there's, like a, there's like a long, deep, rich history of um, my family, you know, just, just being involved with the church. Um, uh, both both sides of the grandparents um, were also um, church planters and um, musicians as well. 
Um, but you know, that's like every typical Filipino family yeah. beat. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Every everybody plays three instruments or something and sings yeah. and dances. <laughs> yeah, that's, just, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so we were very involved, you know, with church growing up. Um, always, I mean, always. I always remember just being in church since I was a kid. Um, and so we we're, you know, really blessed to kind of have that kind of upbringing. We went to obviously a private. Um, Christian Academy. And so, um, you know, always just kind of just being involved with church, especially in school, um, you know, because we were in band and choir. And so you're, you know, and then you make friends with all your friends and you serve in church. And so that was kind of the whole deal. Um, you know, and I think, um, you know, I knew who, I knew who Jesus was. I knew who the Lord, you know, who the Lord was, um, I think maybe just like head knowledge wise. Um, but there came a point, um, you know, like, so going through school, high school, in a college, um, uh, you know, there, there, there came a point where um, I really, um, my faith really was, was like tested <laughs> and um you know i i really um i i don't even know how to how to explain it but where god like really used circumstances to really reveal himself and draw him like draw me closer to him and um that actually happened um in college um going into my second year of college where um actually no this was after my second year of college and um uh i was on a tour in europe and um we like literally just competed and performed and won like the most like titles for like it's basically the choir olympics in wales and we were like one of the two choirs from the u.s like representing you know, like the U.S. It was like a really cool, um, you know, thing to be a part of. And, um, you know, at that point in my life, like, I had it going on, you know. It was like, all right, like, like I, I'm doing the thing that I love, and I know I'm good at it, um, you know, and I know there's a potential for it to go, you know, as far as I could dream. Um, and, you know, even though, like, those – I think those um, those aspirations were good. Um, uh, you know, to me, they were good. It's like, hey, like, this is a good thing. You know, you're putting, you know, you're like putting your effort into something um, like that you love to do. But I think there was a lot of pride in there too. Um, but because it was such a good thing, you know, it, it didn't really like seem like it was bad. But anyways, um, the Lord grabbed my attention because I came back. I actually, uh, right after our last competition, I walked off this humongous, humongous stage. I mean, we're, we're on television with like Sean Connery, like the queen, everybody, like they're all there. And like, I literally we perform a walk off stage and I collapsed to the floor. Um, I was having these extreme migraines and everything that was going on. And, um, we had no idea what it was. We were thinking because the stage was like laced out with flowers and all this stuff that I was having some kind of weird allergic reaction because I really bad allergies and things. So, um, uh, you know, so eventually they have the like paramedics and everybody come check me out. It was so embarrassing um, because backstage, you know, like they usually like film the choirs coming off and everything. And you see me like <laughs> collapse and it's like this right. big thing that's being shown all throughout the UK and everything. Uh, uh -huh. And I'm like passed out. Uh, it was kind of embarrassing. But anyways, fast forward. So we're coming home from the ship and I I'm still experiencing these, these migraines. And um, I noticed that I was losing some of my vision in, in, in one of my eyes. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I just need, um, you know, I just need to, to get new prescription lenses or something and just get it checked out. Um, so as soon as I get off the plane, my mom had already, you know, 
you know, our moms that or parents that are in the in the medical field. It's like this. They, you know, they get things rolling. So as soon as I get off the plane, I'm <laughs> really in the car, on my way to yeah. get on my <laughs> on my way to get checked up by my, you know, by my GP. And um, he checked my eyes, and um, he was like, "We're okay. We're going to um, write a referral, and you need to drive to USC Doheny immediately to see be seen by." this specialist and <laughs> i was like what's on uh, um so my mom and i we end up going and we get seen by the specialist and i remember this day like vividly i was in this in this room getting checked up by the ophthalmologist my mom is sitting to my left and he basically told me that i had a serious case because of uh, my my skin problems and my eczema and like it's it we we figured it out it's it's also tied into um, an autoimmune um, deficiency, like a disease that I have. So all these years I was taking steroids and putting steroids on my face. It was causing inflammation in my eyes and causing steroid acute glaucoma. And so basically the doctor told my, me and my mom, like, yeah, you're going blind. Like your optic nerve on both sides are pretty much fried. Um, and it's just now it's just a moment of like, when you're going to lose your vision <laughs> and um, like me, like as you know, again, just as stubborn and as prideful as I was, I was like, okay, well just give me some medicine, eye drops and I'll be on my way. But then he had to explain like, no, it's not like that. And then I remember seeing my mom like drop to the floor and like start crying. And I was like, okay, I think this is a lot more real than, um, than I thought. And so, uh, <clears throat> So at that point, <laughs> um, at that point, um, you know, it was like this whole process and journey of um, literally watching my my vision go away, like within months, and um, and then surgeries after surgeries after surgeries. Obviously, you know, you can't repair nerve damage, and my optic nerve was completely shot. It's like tying a hose or the, a balloon to the end of a hose and then just turning on the faucet. Um, what, what glaucoma does is like, it doesn't allow the fluid in your eye to, to, to drain because all the tissues inflamed. And so eventually it just pops. And so um, there's a, there's, I mean, just ridiculous amount of damage done. And so um um, that then, you know, then I kind of got, I, I was just, you know, technically I was like into like a different season now. And that season was at first, cause I, I, I literally watched myself go blind in like three months after that. And, you know, I was going to, I was starting to do, um, uh, like braille, getting prepared to do braille classes and, um, just a lot of crazy stuff, um, <laughs> um, at the church. Um, I, I, you know, I was, I kind of got angry at people because, um, and I'm glad that the Lord pulled me out of that, um, because that was not the right place. But I was told also when we, when we went to get, when we went to go get prayer from me that, um, it was because I was being punished because <laughs> I wasn't living a life like honoring to God. And so God was punishing me. Um, yeah, not so much that, you know, praise the Lord got called me out of that. Um, um, and so it, it became a dark time, you know? And so, you know, I had all this head knowledge, sorry, I, like I said, this is a journey. I had all this head knowledge about like who the Lord was. Um, but you know, I never had that real like rubber meets the road kind of, um, like moment where. It's like, okay, like th I, either what I believe is real or it's not. Um, and, um, you know, like that was, that was a hard place to be um, because, you know, I, I had a lot of things going on for me and everything was taken away. Um, like, like in an instant, you know, like very Job-like, um, yeah. which a little caveat to that is we found out that my autoimmune disease is actually called Job syndrome, which is totally weird. Um, <laughs> super yeah. weird. 
Yeah, that's the first time so, I've ever heard of that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, um, um, you know, like, there were some dark times. But praise God, like, in college, um, praise the Lord, in college, I had met friends in college that were um, that were um, believers, that were, like, solid believers, evangelical believers, um, and they went to church, like, at... A couple of them went to, I think, Diamond Bar, Calvary Chapel, Diamond Bar, um, Chino Golden Hills. Yeah, yeah, Golden Springs. That's, that's what it was. Yeah. And so, um, you know, they were such a blessing to me and encouragement to me because once I lost my vision, I had locked myself pretty much just in isolation in my room and I didn't want to see anybody. I was really angry. Um, you know, I was really angry. Um um inside and uh i would i remember that they would couple, they would come in like shifts like during the week and they would read they so they would come and read me um uh like devotionals and um like chicken soup for the soul devotionals and other all these kind yeah. of devotionals and pray with yeah. me uh -huh. um you know and um you know, for a while, I, you know, to be honest, like, I was really callous to it. I, I, I really was. But then at the same time, there was something about that that, like, was really ministering in my heart. Um, you know, and through the whole process of this happening, like, I, I always felt peace in my heart. Like, for some reason, I always felt peace in my heart. Like, like you know, like, and, and I didn't understand it yet, but there was, there was always a peace in my heart about it. And so... Yeah. Um, you know, a few years later, um, you know, a few years go by, like between like two to three years and, um, Christmas morning. So, or not Christmas morning, let me go Christmas Eve. We were having a, uh, like a Christmas Eve celebration at the house. Um, so my grandma was kind of like the matriarch of our family. And so, because she was at our house, like we're designated the house for the family Christmas party. So, um, I remember having, we were having this party and Christmas Eve, and then I started to have these migraines again, like really bad, like migraines to the point where like, it just shuts my body down. Like, and I would feel like I'd want to collapse. Like I did when they first found out about, um, when they first found about, uh, about my glaucoma. And so, you know, knowing my mom and, and the connections that as a hospital administrator at her hospital in LA, she like made the phone call and we, and we just jetted out of the house in Covina and we drove straight to the emergency room in downtown LA um, at her hospital, California medical center. And so um, we were checked in um, at the ER and then, um, and just praise God. Like, you know, that just happened. My mom, you know, God had placed my mom there. Like, yeah. you know, um, and she just retired last year after 42 years of working there. So mind you, this was like way back in like 99, 2000, 2001 ish now. So this is like almost 20 years ago. Um, so we get there, I get sent to the emergency room and because of my mom, like we were able to get me into a room, like basically that's connected to the ER because the ER was in one is in the older building of the, of the hospital. And so they put me in this room that was just completely isolated by itself. So I didn't have to be around. Hold on a second, Ian. Uh, you know Ian Dyson from uh, Calvary Aurora, the worship pastor there. Oh yeah, he's just, yeah. He's he's in the bottom. He said, "Love you guys. Just want to stop by, dude. Love oh, you, man. <laughs> say hi to say yeah. hi to the Taylors for me from over there. I miss those guys. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. Keep keep going. <laughs> no worries. So um, yeah. so yeah. So um, and I pr and I promise this is this is just gonna lead to everything. It's not much longer. This is, this, so this is your, we're there. This is your yeah, so we're there. I'm in this room literally by myself. Um, and um, I, mind you, I can't see anything. My head's spinning. My vision's gone. All I hear is just, you know, ER commotion down the hall. And, um, and I remember I just started crying. Like, I just started crying. Like, I was like, <laughs> all right, well, like, this is... I, I think at that point, like I was resolved that this was just going to be my life. Like this is what my life was going to be like. And, 
Um, so I remember just crying. And then again, like that, there's that peace that just overwhelmed my body. And I was like, well, this is weird. And then I just started praying and like crying out to God. And, you know, the point from when I found out I was losing my vision to the point where I was in this emergency room by myself, um, you know, I don't really think I really cried out to God in the way that, um, um, that I was that night. Like it was different. <laughs> I think my my crying out to God before that that moment was more like screaming at God and blaming God wow. for things, and um, He was really breaking me down. Um, and it got and it finally just came to that point, and you know I had accepted like, hey, this is what it's going to be. Um, and I remember just crying out to the Lord. And I said, Lord, like, um, like if this is what it's going to be. Um, then, then so be it. Like, this is, this is what it's going to be. But I said, but I said, I know you can, I know you can heal and I know you could do miracles. And it wasn't like I was trying to bargain with the Lord, but you know, it was like, it was just coming to the reality of everything. I said, okay, this is where this is what it is. I said, I know you could do this. So if it's, you know, but I said, either way, if I'm healed or not, if you do a miracle and I'm healed or I'm not, like my life is yours. Like whatever gifts that I, I have that I could still use, um, like that's that's all for your glory and for your kingdom. And, you know, my life is yours. My life isn't mine. Like Jesus paid for my, my life on the cross. And, you know, and like I just remember right after I said that, like all, I just remember like a voice, like in my head, just saying, peace, be still, like just peace, be still. And then like, and then I fell asleep. Um, so I fell asleep. And what happened later that evening was I went in for another procedure um, where uh, um, the surgeon had to go in and put another tube shunt in my eye. Basically it's um, because your eye can't drain with glaucoma. So they put a tube. They drill a hole and they put a tube so your, so your eye can drain. And um, I remember, like, we went through that procedure. And then I woke up. I was obviously um, admitted into the hospital. Um, and so I woke up the next day, Christmas morning, um, to the nurse coming in to change my bandages. Um, and... Um, uh, so this is where like the crazy thing happened was as they were changing my bandages on my eye, like I could see in my left eye, um, like where there was no vision. <laughs> my right eye though, um, was still completely blind, but my left eye, like I could totally see, um, which is wild, like, and I just remember, like, whoa, um, <laughs> what a Christmas gift. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think, so it was, after, that was like a pivotal moment in my life um, where, um, like, I just knew, like, you know, like, this is a, this is a, this is a test. This is like my testimony um, where the doctors said it was impossible to ever see again. Like they can't repair nerves. Um, and to this day, like if they check my, the nerve damage in both eyes, it's still really bad. Yeah. But for some reason I could see and they could measure my visual field in my left eye, which is wild. Like to me. So, um, after that, you know, it was like, all right, you know, I'm just charging it for the Lord. And um, like, that's where like a lot of, you know, my life just turned around. Um, and I just really dedicated a lot of my life at that point to just serving the Lord in the capacities he's given me to. And um, 
you know, and then there were years like way after, like, you know, like post-college where, um, you know, I started to get like caught up in, in the industry as like, you know, as a, as a musician, as a touring musician, um, playing for <laughs> a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of legacy acts, um, touring everywhere, um, you know, and, um, and then my, and during that time, my spirit like inside became restless again. And that's where I made the decision, like, hey, like, I don't feel at peace really when I'm, when I'm not using my gift in, in church and for the Lord and serving the body. Yeah. Um, and so I made a decision. I made a decision to come back, you know, off the road at that time, you know, I was, um, I was planning to get married to a girl. Um, um, uh, and that didn't work out like, and God had used that situation as well to really kind of focus me back in. And so that kind of led me into, um, like, I want to say like this recent chapter of my life, um, at San Juan, because that's where he led me to in 2011 to the school of worship. And, um, that's where I met pastor John. That's where I met Scott, pastor Scott Cunningham and everybody and that's i feel like that was like a huge turning point in my life because you know i told the lord like i just i just want to use this for your for your glory i just want to use this for your church um and um so that christmas um season in 2011 uh, during school worship, we were we were scheduled with the school worship choir and band to to lead worship at at Calvary San Juan, yeah. and so um, um, I remember the night before it was like Saturday night. I got a text, or actually no, it was a call from Scott Scott Cunningham, and he said, "Hey, um, Landon can't make it tomorrow. I think he was sick or something." Um, and uh, Scott said, hey, do you mind covering, like, pads and keys? And so um, I said, sure. You know, like, um, that I, I'd love to do that. And um, that's where um, I was kind of put in the corner next to Pastor John <laughs> during, like, the worship set. Um, I just remember yeah. – like Pastor John and I were talking and he was like, dude, I love the key. Like, and mind you, I never led, really led, led like in the way that I guess we know people yeah. that lead. What you're saying, yeah. I, I was all, yeah. so that was kind of the first time because for the nine, nine years before that point though, I was at Water of Life with my best friend, Garrett yeah. Hall. And I was just playing in the in the in the gospel venue, in the, in so, which was called Soul Celebration. So I just played keyboard and I sang background vocals and I'd help lead the band, but I'd never really been up front to lead. So, you know, after nine years of like playing, like then to get called to do that, then it was like it was weird. And I just remember Pastor John was like, "Dude, I love the keyboard." He's like, "You know, if you can, you know, if you ever have any free time and want to come down, like I was like, yeah, man, I like because I, I love John. Like, I would always get wrecked Friday mornings in his class. We were going through the life of David, and um, Making of a Man by Al, Alan Redpath was his, was the book. And man, er, all all of us would get wrecked every Friday morning by Pastor John. And I was like, dude, I love this guy. I was like, yeah, of course. And so that kind of started the cycle of me coming down. So I would drive down from Covina um, on like. Uh, on the weekends to help out and then eventually like midweek and then so um, yeah so that's kind of how that happened um, but there's another major point I actually skipped going into that at school of worship yeah. was my first I want to say two months in the school of worship two or two and a half months uh -huh. like the Lord actually the Lord actually took my voice away <laughs> Like he took my voice away, 
um, I was having extreme pain and like, um, it was kind of weird. Uh, cause I was coming out of this season of like God really breaking me down. And, and I remember like during my times of devotion, like those first two months or so, the Lord was like, I don't want you to sing <laughs> in front of anybody, yeah. you know, don't really play or anything. Just, yeah. you know, just kind of flow in the background and, um, you know, and so I was like, all right, well, I can't do anything about it anyways, because I can't really, you know, I was, I was having this extreme pain and all this stuff. And so, but then, you know, fast forward the first few months of school worship to the first night of the worship conference, worship leaders conference at Marietta. I remember I sat in the front row. It was the first night I sat in the front row. I think it was Pastor Pedro pe preaching. I just remember getting so wrecked. Yeah. Like, it was like, whoa, where is this coming from? Yeah. And then um, and then, I remember at the end of his uh, teaching, you know, I think he had done some kind of like call, like, you know, if just, you, you know, it's like you just need to be prayed for. And I just remember I was in the front row. I fell to my knees. Like I was on yeah. my knee. Like I literally had my forehead was creased because it was on the ground. It was on the floor. And I remember just crying and just being so broken down. And then Danny Donnelly wow. did the afterglow that night. Yes. And I remember just, just, you know, just like being in this like place of like prayer and just, you know, and repentance and just being broken wow. down to the Lord and just bringing everything to the Lord. And then no joke, like I'm not joking. Like, I just remember all of a sudden then, then, then getting up and, like, everybody was already cleared out. They were resetting the stage for the next morning. Yeah. It was so wild. But then I remember getting up and I remember the Lord saying, like, okay, like, you're, you're ready to, like, lead my people now. And that was heavy for me. Like, that was, like, a big thing, man. Like, because um, I had come out of a really – um, like a bad heartbreak and like just weird life stuff, like coming to a close. But I think it was yeah. the Lord really pulling me out, you know, and, and really setting me apart for, for his, his plan and his, you know, his, his, uh, you know, the, like his, his game plan and, and, and the path that he wanted me to be on. Wow. And, um, and so I, you know, like when I, like that night, I just remember like having peace in my heart. And I was like, whoa, like, like that was that audible voice again that I felt that I heard when, you know, I was in the emergency room. But this time that voice was like, okay, like your heart's in the right place. Like you can lead my people now. Like, and I had no idea what that meant. I was like, this is weird, you know? <laughs> and so um I remember like going over because everybody after the sessions, they go over to the little coffee shop area. And then usually there's people that perform and sing for that night. And I remember coming there and I just felt so lighthearted and my heart was, you know, it just felt like it had so much joy and peace inside. And then I remember Scott coming up to me and he, you know, just randomly. And he was like, Hey, Brian, um, tomorrow morning, for this for the staff um worship like devo time like you're gonna lead worship um wow. <laughs> i was like what this is weird <laughs> like you know i was like in my head and i didn't tell him like dude like you're gonna trip out you don't know what the lord just told me um but like um so so then that kind of started the whole thing you know for me and um and then so you know fast forward to christmas time at san juan that was the first time I set foot in the yeah. church and I just remember the first time I set foot in that church and every time <laughs> almost eight years now, like I've uh, always just been overcome with the Holy spirit. Like every time I, you know, and you know, the church isn't a building, but like, man, it was just like, that was just, I don't know. That was just a place for me. Like where I just felt like, man, like the Lord is here. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, that's amazing, bro. So, that's amazing, like how, you know, like, yeah, growing up in the, in the in the church culture, but yet all of a sudden the Lord just gets a hold of you because, like, it's one thing to have knowledge of the Word of God and 
It's right. just the fundamentals, but it's another thing to have a, a true relationship with him where you realize, you know, growing up, oh, it was religion. But then later on, you're like, oh, wait, this is not religion. Like, God is a true thing. Jesus thing is, it's actually, uh, figure he's actually a real person. And yeah. he had, spoke to me and got a hold of me. And like, wow, that's just amazing. Like how the Lord just, you know, gets a hold of you, which is amazing. And, you know, people all the time, and I always tell myself, you know, like you can't live off your parents' faith or anything like that. You you gotta <laughs> have put your own faith in Jesus. So that's that's awesome, man. That's really that's really cool. That's really yeah. good to hear. Oh, Jake Acuna just joined in. What's up, man? How are you doing? And let me see who <laughs> joined in here. Uh, Arast. Oh, Arast is from uh, Free Chapel in Georgia. Just joined in too. Oh, what's up, man? How are awesome. you doing? Awesome. Yeah, and uh, see a lot of friends in awesome. here. Helene yeah. from School of yeah. Worship. She was <laughs> yeah one of my best friends at School of Worship. She's uh, in here. Uh, I see yeah. one of my sisters from church, Iris, uh, Callie's yeah. in here, Gia's in here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. What's up, Gia? <laughs> How are you doing? And um, that's cool, man. And then, like, yeah, School of Worship, um, you, you got to meet great guys. Like, uh, well, well, actually, how we connected, too, like, how we, came, we became best friends because of Leonard Jarman. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can't say long, but I'm glad Brian is here. Yeah, was, oh, Caleb is here too. What's up, dude? Yeah, I got the Leonard, and uh, yeah, and and that, that's just awesome, man. And like what the Lord's done. And then uh, I remember you telling me because you know you you've been touring a lot. You, you toured a lot in the past, and like you know played with so many people. You you had a stint with um, Donnie and Marie Osmond, right? Like yeah, yeah. What were you doing with them? Uh, I was playing keys. Playing keys, yeah. Cool. So, That's so cool, man. Yeah, the whole the whole Osmond family, like they're really sweet people, man. Cool, yeah. cool, cool people. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was, um, you know, very, I was welcomed like into that into that whole family and circle of friends. Um, like, and yeah, that was that was a sweet time. You know, that was a crazy time yeah. though because I was doing a lot of driving, like up to Utah, like with pit stops in Vegas, and yeah. I mean, um, that was that was a whole. I, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I feel like I've lived like 20 lives. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was, that was, you know, that was quite the experience. Like, um, you know, like just kind of linking up with all those people and, and then with the jets, with the Wolfgrams, you know, playing with them. And like, that was, you know, that, that was, that was a fun time. Like, I feel like, um, I didn't spend too much time, um, you know, I didn't spend too much time. I want to say like, there are some people like in musicians that they lock themselves like in their room or in their house for like three months. And then, and then they come out like Moses, you know, like holding their keyboards, like yeah. in their hands, you know, they're like, Oh, you know, like that wasn't me like <laughs> yeah like a lot of my a lot of my practice and like me earning my stripes was like trial by fire like you know just show up to a rehearsal or you know you get the you get the you know you get the charts of the song like you know a few hours before and then it's just like cross your fingers like let's go like you know um uh you know and 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 that's where i think a lot of my growth happened as far as my playing was concerned and that happened a lot too at, at the nine years that i was at water of life in fontana playing in the in the in the gospel venue at, at, at soul celebration i remember walking into rehearsals on thursday nights and garrett will tell you like garrett can attest to this like i would leave crying because man praise the lord for the, for for my brother uh todd um todd lynch man he was a um he was a graduate student from UNT University of North Texas. And he was like a jazz head. And so he was in charge of the worship ministry. And he was like kind of my mentor on the keys. And, and this guy, I mean, was like blazing, man. Like I, I would be scared of him. Like, and he would just like during rehearsals, like show me like, all right, Brian, just play it like this. And he's like, yeah. okay, can you do it? Yeah. And then and then he'll stand there and then just watch. You know, uh -huh. and I'm like, uh I would leave rehearsals, no joke. Garrett would tell you, like, I would leave rehearsals crying and felt so discouraged because I just felt like 
I sucked, man. Like, I'm like, what am I doing here? But you know what? A lot of that, you know, a lot of that um, trial by fire, you know, like rehearsals and, and just like that, that was a lot of me earning my stripes, you know, and, and being humbled, you know, and, and kind of, um, you know, being pushed beyond my beyond the limits that I that I had probably set for myself unconsciously. And so that, I mean, that really helped a lot. And so, um, you know, a, a lot of that, a lot of that was, I think a lot of the, where I'm at today is attributed to that. And, you know, it wasn't all, you know, rainbows and sunshine. It was, you know, it was a lot of, it was a lot of being humbled, um, being humbled and, um, and then just, you know, kind of getting kicked in the butt to, to push myself, um, uh, to push myself like beyond what, you know, I, I thought I could handle. Um, so man, I see a lot of cool people in here. CJ's in here. <laughs> Zach Join Thompson. You from... Oh, Zach Thompson. Oh, what's up, man? <laughs> How are you doing? I know he's in dental school right now because his dad is playing drums with us at Vision. So you know, that's my dude, time. man. Hot yeah. pocket, Sean Thompson. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, hey, represent <laughs> represent the school. Fight on, brothers. Fight yeah. on. Come on. Yeah, I remember. I remember Sean told me. I remember Sean told me to you know uh, when I well, uh, when you when you heard that I was gonna you know do worship with you to call you. Uh, uh, what was it? Some what was it, what nugget again? <laughs> oh, hot pocket. Yeah, why, why did I say nugget? <laughs> hot pockets. So, yeah. hey, I, I like I got hot my, nuggets too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I got about fifteen minutes because that, that's all Instagram gives me. Let's switch. Um, let's switch to us uh, because on a nice run this year until COVID hit. Now, uh, what is your now? Regardless of like you know, if or let's just say if season were to continue, you know, without having any biased opinion, do you think the Lakers are going to go all the way, bro? Bro, yeah. do you see this? Yeah. All the way, all the all way. the way, <laughs> all the way. Because honestly, because honestly, before the season started. I didn't think, you know, because the Clippers, you know, you know, they picked up Kawhi. They also picked up Paul George. I didn't think they would, the Lakers would have a chance, you know, like, you know, going against them. And AD and my boy JaVale McGee were just, you know, <laughs> dominating. And then those, but those weren't the people. The other one guy was, I think everybody was focused at was Alex Caruso. Right. <laughs> and, and I think, you know, the, the vision that he had. And so, like, who, who do you – so, like, let's just say LeBron – LeBron because LeBron's contract can be up in a couple of years. Who do you – AD, for sure, I think is going to stay in L.A. Who do you think will be the next superstar to come to L.A. within the next couple of years or so? Giannis, dude. You do? <laughs> I think it could happen. <laughs> Honest, That's just being selfish. Antetokounmpo. <laughs> However you say his last name. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Shaq says Antetokounmpo or Antetokounmpo. You know, it's like, <laughs> but that's why he called me Antetokounmpo. But he's, he's, he's called a Greek freak. Well, actually, it, that does make sense because the Lakers did pick up his younger brother, right? Yep. So, yeah. And so, it's a possibility. That, that's kind of like a bait to kind of like get Giannis to come in here and all that stuff. Um now, I don't know how – I remember uh, one time when I led worship with you at Calvary. After that, we went to Buffalo Wild Wings to watch a Dodger game, the playoff game. Oh, yeah, I remember and, that. Yeah, and so I don't know how much um, you focus, like, you know, much on baseball or anything like that, but what is your view um, – because I asked Joshua Taylor this, you know, when I asked – you know, because he's a Dodger fan. But what is your view on the 2017 World Series with the Houston Astros? Like, do you know about it? Yeah, you know what? Like with the the whole cheating scandal, uh, yeah. man. I I just think I think they sh they should be stripped of that of that year, um, 
I felt like the punishment that they got was like not justified. It was very light. I I feel like they they got they got a real um like slippery way out like um and they're really they weren't really being held accountable. But I feel like th- it's sh- the title that year should be forfeited from the Astros. But then again, it's like I don't want them to just give it to the Dodgers. Um yeah. Like, because I, I want to feel like we earned like it, but, you know, like. Yeah. That's like a wimpy way to earn a, to earn a title. A title. Like some, I know. Your, your opponent cheated. And it'll just look but bad you know, on you because, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, no, no. But, I mean, like, like you look at it this way. Like, you look. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a cyclist, too. Um, you know, like. Um, so, like, Greg, Greg Lamont. Like, all these guys. Like, you know, and whenever one of those guys got caught cheating with steroids. They strip everything away, man. Like, you know, and it's like, I don't, I don't know why the, you know, the, like, the MLB commissioner, like, they, I don't know. It just, it's just super weird. But I wouldn't want like, you know, them to just give the, give the title to the, to the Dodgers, like, because I just feel like that's lame, you know, because you want to like earn it, you want to feel like you earned it, but exactly. like, exactly, right. You know, but I mean, it was like, dude, like the other team was like obviously cheating. It's so weird. Like, there's so many videos that like reveal like how they did all that stuff, it, and that's just wicked, man. Like, and that I mean, that that's just not cool. So um, I don't know. Like, maybe just put an asterisk for that year. Um, but um, <laughs> it's like how weird, you never know. How weird has it been? How weird has it been for you? Because you know, we we're in the middle of basketball season. Baseball season was gonna was supposed to start too, but the whole COVID thing. You know, we can't watch any sports now. I couldn't go to the Angel the Angel Home Opener because of the whole COVID thing. So, um, I mean, other than you know being in the being you know reading your Bible and just like worshiping and all that, how weird has it been not having sports? You know, to watch you know during this whole time, like during this whole pandemic. Um. You know, like, it, it's not bad. It's not like, I'm not, like, so diehard that, you know, like, I, I get really upset about it or anything. Like, even during the season, like, the, the Lakers season, like, I would watch, like, the highlight or, or replay of the games, like, after church or after, you know, work or whatever in the evenings. Yeah. So I never really got to watch a lot of the games live or yeah. the way I actually like to watch or I just listen on the radio. Um, so, you know, um, it, you know, it's like, I wasn't really bummed out about it. Um, but, you know, at the same time, like, I just felt, I was kind of disappointed because, like, I felt like, I felt like my Lakers were having a really good, you know, run, especially, like, right before they shut everything down. Like, you know, we just beat the Bucks with Giannis. We just beat the Clippers, like, you know, like we were, we were ahead in the, you know, in, in the West and, you know, but um, I don't know, like, I, I don't know like how they're going to um, hopefully re- if they do like reinstate the season. Um, but again, like, like, you know, just to answer your question, I wasn't too, too bummed, um, you know, but I think I, I was, I'm more bummed about like just, like being away from like my church family, um, you know, and, and just seeing people <laughs> like, um, you know, that that's been hard. Like that's been hard. Um, and I, and I think it's been hard for a lot of people, you know, and um, um, cause you know, those, those are your, those are the people that, that you, you do life with and, and you fellowship with. And so I mean, sorry, that was like a bird walk from the other question, yeah. but no, 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 you're good. Man. Um, um sp- st- sticking with the topic of the Lakers, um, now we all lost, uh, you know, uh, lost Kobe Bryant to a tragic accident. Um, where were you, and how did you hear about the news? Oh gosh. Yeah. Okay, so let me just reiterate: like, I'm a die. Um, and I'm a big Kobe fan, like humongous. Um, so, it, dude, that was rough, bro. Um, so I had just finished literally like the like the down chord for the last song in the worship set. 
for second service and I, and I do my normal walk around the, around the sanctuary to exit. And as soon as I get into the, um, into the foyer of the church, like four or five people like bum rush me. And they're like, did you hear, did you hear? And I was like, hear what? Like what's going on? And then um, one of my buddies, one of, one of the buddies like was like, dude, Kobe, Kobe died in a, in a, in a helicopter crash. And, I just remember like just being hit with like shock and disbelief. Um, and it wasn't like, you know, um, I mean, he, he was like a, you know, he was like a sports like hero to me, but I, you know, I didn't, he didn't know me. I didn't know him, but like still, you know, like he represented a lot of my like childhood, teenage years, you know, college years. Um, I wrote, actually wrote a blog about it, but I never posted it. Um, you know, cause like people are like, man, why are you so beat up over it? I was like, well, you know, like there are certain like, you know, people and icons that people look up to that like help people cope or go through difficult seasons and things, you know, and Kobe was like one of those people for me because like I was always um, put down and I was always, um told I wasn't gonna amount to things and I, I just crazy crazy stuff growing up. Um but you know and and so I had followed his I had followed his journey, you know, and, and seeing, you know, like all the, the naysayers, like especially, you know, that the playoff game versus Utah when he when he airballed, you know, but the like the last shot the last two shots, but nobody wanted to take the shot. Nobody had the guts to do it on the Lakers, but Kobe was like, dude, and you know, and everybody was hating on him. Oh, he airballed this, but then he came back. Like, and then that's when like, you know, he kind of just lit it. And so, you know, just, just the drive, the fight to, you know, to like, you know, I, I don't know, like just kind of be the best, the, the, the best version of myself, you know, and, and not, not get into, you know, the naysayers or, or all the, you know, just all the, all the junk that, you know, I was told when I was growing up and, and to kind of, you know, show people like, dude, no, I, I can do this. And so, um, you know, like that, that was kind of the connection that I had with him. Um, but, uh, I, I remember when I was told at that moment, um, I, re I just remember feeling so heartbroken for his family. Oh like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, feeling super heartbroken for his family. Yeah. Um, you know because he had just retired and posted about him. I'm losing you, bro. That day, I remember that day and that time. It was it was right after I I walked off stage, walked right into the foyer, and then I got like bum rushed by like five friends from church that were like, "Dude, did you hear?" Mm. Yeah. Um, and so that's yeah. how I heard. <laughs> that's 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 crazy, man. Hey, I only got five minutes with you because the Instagram only gives us like you know an hour. So uh, uh, let's play a little uh, "Would You Rather," and then I'll, and then uh, I'll wrap up a couple <laughs> questions, and then yeah. So uh, um, Nike or Adidas? Nike. Nike. All right. Uh, would you have Taco Bell or Del Taco? <laughs> I had Taco Bell earlier today. <laughs> I had a, I had a, I had a Taco Supreme. <laughs> Taco um, Bell. I, I know it's a stupid California question. Uh, in and out or Five Guys? Oh gosh, In and Out. Five Guys is like sloppy microwavable Burger King burgers. <laughs> Did Jason Powell yes um, on Thursdays? He said he'd take Five Guys over In and Out uh, only if the price wasn't. <laughs> You know, wasn't bad. Like a million dollars um, for a burger. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Starbucks or coffee bean? <laughs> oh gosh. Um, you know what? There aren't that many coffee beans around, so I'll have to say Starbucks only because mm -hmm. I'm a frequent um, uh -huh. uh, patron to the Starbucks on the on the corner. Uh, um, yeah, out here in San Juan. So yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that is true. Um, uh, BJ's or, uh, BJ's or Cheesecake Factory? Oh, gosh. Um, 
Dang, that's hard. Yeah. You know what? I'll say BJ's because I, I really yeah. like their barbecue chicken pizza. Yeah. <laughs> Would you have a Southern barbecue or Korean barbecue? Oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll do KBBQ. That, that's kind of been my KBBQ. Jam. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Hey, a couple more questions and then, um, uh, and then like, um, I'll have one more question after that too. Um, what's your favorite worship song? Oh gosh. Um, you know what? Um, I love uh, forever rain. That song mm. has a special place in my heart that, mm. um, ever since school of worship, like that song has always had a special, um, uh -huh. especially the bridge. Like, and I just feel like yeah. that kind like with the story of my testimony that I said, like, you know, I don't feel, uh -huh. I don't feel like peace in my heart using my gifts unless it's like for the Lord. Like when, uh -huh. Whenever I would sing that bridge, um, my heart will sing no other name, Jesus. That part, like, man, that just gets uh -huh. me. I cry every time. Like, yeah. that, that's my mm -hmm. jam. Yeah. Oldie but a good. Oh, one more, one more uh, what would you rather question, actually, before I ask you another, the other question. Um, since we're basketball, Steph Curry or Allen Iverson? Oh, dude. Oh, man, that's hard, dude. Yeah. Um, you know, I. I'll go with I'll go with Chef Curry right now. Steph, I'll go with yeah. Chef Curry because he's the yeah. one that could hit from half court all the time, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, AI had those handles, man, and he could just smoke mm -hmm. people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, what has been your key verse, your key scripture that you hold on to? Oh gosh, uh -huh. there's a lot. Um, uh -huh. But there's there's this one specific verse. I think ever since the school worship year in uh -huh. Isaiah, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts on you. That's good. So that, that's, that's good, kind man. of been. That's good, man. Yeah. Perfect hey, peace, um, man. It's found in Jesus. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Hey, uh, real quick, um, you know, with the last couple of minutes that we got, um, you know, we're in COVID season. We're all quarantined. We couldn't, we can't go to church. Some, a lot of us have been furloughed. You know, we, some 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 of us have health issues or financial issues. People are worried about um, you know this whole virus pandemic. Um, I know the Lord has put a word in your heart to share a word of encouragement to the viewers out there that may be worried about it. Do you mind sharing that a word of encouragement to <clears throat> our viewers? Oh man, uh -huh. yeah. I think um, you know what I was um, I was in my car yesterday and I was kind of thinking about the whole thing about. COVID uh -huh. and everything. And yeah. then I just started singing. I just started singing and I posted it on my Instagram yesterday. I just started uh -huh. singing the, the pre-chorus of For, Forever by Bethel. Uh -huh. um, the ground began to shake. Stones yeah. rolled away. Forever uh -huh. he is glorified. Yeah. You know, and I think it's easy to get caught up right now mm -hmm. because we're constantly being fed with all these updates and all the news right. about, about COVID and, you yeah. know, and all this virus stuff. And, and I mean, like some of it, like, we don't even know if it's real or fake. Um, uh -huh. But, you know, it's, it's, I just feel like it's constantly being pumped out and regurgitated by everybody. And it's like easy to get that stuff uh -huh. is, it, you know, it really, it can really take a toll on your spirit. Uh -huh. Um you know, and I think for me, like when I was sitting in my car yesterday, I was feeling, starting to feel a little overwhelmed, but then I, uh -huh. but then like just by the grace of God, I was able to just start singing. And then like the focus of my, my heart and my mind's attention went from all the craziness and uh -huh. it just shifted to like my resurrected King. Like it just shifted uh -huh. to Jesus, you know, seconds, and how seconds, Jesus, uh, you know, how Jesus, Sorry. Jesus, yeah you know, conquered the grave, man. And uh -huh. he, he dealt with our biggest problem. So, you uh -huh. know, I, I think just, just keep our focus on Jesus and, yeah. uh, and just to keep trusting in him. Right. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Yeah. I don't mean to rush you, but like, okay. I just have 20, 20 seconds. Cause like, I want to no take the last 30 seconds. To, to pro Dude, thank you so much for joining <laughs> me, man, for like this talk. And uh, we probably have Paul, part two maybe just talk sports in general but we'll see yes, <laughs> uh guys follow him at b malolo um if you're in the san juan capistrano area of south orange county check this church out san juan, calvary chapel san juan capistrano he's a worship pastor there <laughs> pastor john randall's right there too 
Love you, man. Tomorrow, Chris Gwynn from Fresh Life Church. I have five seconds. Love you, man. Peace and blessings, dude. Love you, bro. Bye, Love you, bro. Everybody.